morning. We all stand and worship with us. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met. out of that grave that we put ourselves in with our sin. Thank you, Lord, that we are free. We can declare we are free in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, you're the way maker. You're the miracle worker in our lives. God, you are worthy of our worship. We thank you, Lord, that you are here with us right now.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. Darkness, my God, that 
That's who you are. You're a redeemer, God. And you're a restorer. God, our hope is in you and in you alone.
give to the Lord your burden. Now, some of you have given your burden already to the Lord today and you came in here ready to, ready to roll, right? Ready to worship. But some of you are carrying a burden and it's weighing you down. It's a heartbreak. It's a, <clears throat> maybe your kids have gone crazy on you or you lost a job or you don't know how you're going to pay a bill uh, and it's weighing on you. And I want us to take a minute and do a divine trade. How about doing a trade-off? We're gonna give the Lord our burden and he's gonna give us his peace. Can we do that? Let's just go to the Lord. Father, we just come to you with our burdens. Lord, there's uh, precious people here, Lord, who are carrying a burden of heartbreak, a, a, a loss, something that has come and shattered their life. Lord, there are those who are struggling against some bad report from a doctor. Lord, there are some that don't know how they're going to pay the next bill. And they're worried and afraid. And Lord, right now we just come to make a trade. You said casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So Lord, we're going to cast our cares upon you. At church, I want you to say, Lord, I bring you this burden, this worry, this hurt, this affliction this pain, this fear, I give it to you. I place it in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ. And I leave it there. And I receive in its place your peace, your joy, your comfort, and your assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I believe it's done. Let's sing it one more time, can we? Lift your hands and let's sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's sing it now. seated, I want you to turn to somebody. Cindy, anything on your heart? You just spoke it over the people, you know. Just, Amen. This song, you know, first service, it was just such a sweet presence, and I feel it here. Um, you know, turn your eyes on Jesus. And I, I was sharing with first service how, you know, it's just as simple as that. When we're going through something, it's just the name of Jesus, because he's the answer for everything. And, you know, I was thinking, too, how, you know, how amazing it's going to be when we're standing face to face and we see the face of Jesus. That's right. You know, and this world will be behind us. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I believe Jesus is in the house and you can be seated. God bless you.
morning, everybody, and welcome to Turning Point Church. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us today. If this is your first time here, we want to extend a special welcome to you. There are a lot of things going on around our church, so I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you all about it. So check this out. We are so excited to announce that live groups are back. Community is such an important part of fellowship here at Turning Point Church, and live groups are the perfect opportunity for you to get connected. This month, our live groups will meet tonight. To find a live group in your area, check out the Connect Wall in the North Lobby or stop by the Guest Connection Desk for more information. You can also email Pastor Bob at info at tpcfamily.org. Ladies, registration is in full swing for this year's Fields Conference, City on a Hill. Join us on August 27th and 28th for an exciting time of worship and connection with other amazing women of God. This year, we will hear powerful words and wisdom from author and Bible teacher Lisa Harper. This conference is going to be a life-changing weekend that you won't want to miss. So mark your calendars and get registered at tpcfamily.org or heelsconference.com. If you are new here at TPC, we want you to feel at home. There is a place here that is perfect for you, and there are people who would love to help you find that perfect place. Our church is a lot more than just a Sunday service, so if you're ready to get plugged in, the best way to do that is to text CONNECT to 817-617-4378. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for being here. Well, good morning, TPC family. We are so glad you are with us today. If you're joining us online, thank you so much for being part of the online TPC family. We know the Lord is right there with you and has something just for you. You know, if this is your first time with us, you'll notice in the seat pocket in front of you, there's one of these. It's our welcome home card. So if you would take that out, fill it out. On the back side, there's just a few pieces of information we'd like from you. You can also scan the QR code on the front and fill it out on your smartphone. If you do fill the card out, our ushers will have containers that you can place it in on your way out. You know, as Pastor was saying, there's just, there's so much going on in the world right now. It's so easy to get distracted by all the stuff, but there is a God in heaven who is sovereign over all things, is in control of all things, and we know his will will be done. And that's why we sow into the kingdom of God. So let me read the tithe verse to you this morning. Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced, brought their contributions, and put them into the chest until all had given. And here's the principle that goes with it. When God's people were rebuilding the destroyed temple, it says all the leaders... And all the people experienced great joy as they brought their contributions that in the end all had given. God's word ties joy with giving to God's work. You know, we're in a, I don't know where we are in this whole apocalypse thing, but you know, we're rebuilding. And we are here not just to rebuild a building or, or ministries. We're here to rebuild and build and promote the kingdom of God. Because that's the only thing that will remain. This world will pass away, but the things of God will remain forever. There's three ways you can give here at Turning Point Church. You can give online at tpcfamily.org. You can text the word GIVE to 817-617-4378. Or if you're here in person, we have our giving stations along the back wall. Or the ushers will have containers on the way out. So would you join me as we pray and sow into the kingdom of God? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we're just so grateful. First of all, that we have a God in heaven who loves us. And Lord, today we do turn our eyes upon Jesus. And Lord, as we look to you, we see the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we want every single person in our community, in our city, in our state, in our country, and around the world to know that hope. And that's why today, Father, we sow this seed into the good ground of your kingdom so that multitudes would be healed, saved, and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you all join me in that chorus one more time? And turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for Glory. 
amen, amen, amen. And we need to remember in prayer, uh, we've got about 10 of our folks, I believe 10 went to Honduras and they have been having an incredible harvest. As a matter of fact, Johnny Kovar, uh, who is, leads our man, man church on Monday nights, um, actually got on national television. I mean, I saw him. I, I, so I, 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 and he, he said, he, he told me, he said, I said to the hosts, uh, what do I talk about? And they said, whatever you want. He says, well, I just talked about Jesus to national reaching all of Honduras. And uh, amen. So that was good. And um, so I told him, Johnny, what, what do you want me to say when America's Got Talent calls me? Because he, he looked like a deer in headlights at first, and then he loosened up. But it was really, really good. Amen. Now, if I told you this, would you believe it? Here's the statement. You are primarily today the result of who and what you have listened to. Have you ever thought about that? You are today primarily the result of who and what you've listened to through the years. I guarantee you, you wouldn't be in church if you hadn't listened to somebody who said you ought to be in church uh, for the edification of the saints and because God told us to in his word. You wouldn't be here unless somebody had spoken into your life. Now, since we really are the primary result of who or what we're listening to and have listened to, I want to talk to you today about being careful who has your ear. Be careful who has your ear. Be careful who speaks into your life, who you allow to speak into your life. So I'm going to read Mark chapter 4 and verse 21. And let's read what Jesus said. Now, Jesus is going to give a little mini parable. Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open, and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, now I want you to say the next seven words out loud with me, all of you. If you don't do it, I'm going to have us do it again. So let's say it all together. Are you ready? Because here's the most important thing I want to pull out of this parable. Read it. Pay close attention to what you hear. All right? Pay close attention to what you hear and who you hear from. I could add that. Be very careful, scrutinizing, selective, discerning about what goes into your ears, what speaks into your life. Then he goes on, the closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I just thank you for your blessing, for your presence, and for your goodness. And Lord, I'm asking you, open our ears to hear what the Word of God says today. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell your neighbor, perk up and listen. You're going to need this before you even get home. Amen. Now, these words of Jesus were spoken on the tail end of another parable, the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is also in Mark thir or Matthew 13. It's one of Jesus' most recognizable parables. And you'll remember the parable of the sower was all about four different people who listen to the same message, four people who hear the same thing. They hear the same gospel. Jesus presents four people who hear the message of the kingdom. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. That is, in a nutshell, the message of the kingdom, the message of the gospel. So four people listen to it. And Jesus then presents four different results in the lives of those four people. In the first one who heard... Um, didn't understand and remained lost. 
The first one to hear the gospel message, the Bible is clear. Jesus said he doesn't understand what he heard, and therefore he remains lost. So he doesn't even get saved. The second one hears, but he doesn't put down deep roots and is eventually plucked up out of the ground because he doesn't have deep roots. If you want to know what I'm about as a pastor, and I believe local church is here for, local church is here to help you and me with you to put down deep roots. Because in a storm, it's not how good you look above ground, it's how deep your roots go underground. And so we need deep roots. And the second one that heard the word uh, didn't put down deep roots. And when the storms came, he's plucked up and he doesn't succeed in the will of God for his life. The third one hears, but Jesus said his faith is choked out by worries and the attraction of worldly things. So he's all caught up in worldly stuff and in different fears and concerns and worries about life, paying bills, raising the kids, 401k, your education, all these things that comprise life and the stresses of life. They come in and they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But then there's the fourth guy and he's the only one of the four that bears any fruit. And Jesus said, here's why he bore fruit. Because he truly hears, he hears what went into his ears. He heard it and it says he truly heard it and understood it and brings forth much fruit with perseverance. So he stays with his confession of Christ. He stays with the faith. He stays in church, stays in prayer, stays in the word. And he brings forth fruit. So out of the four different hearers of the gospel message, only one did well. The other three were taken out, and Jesus gave us that parable so that we would avoid the things that took those three out. Amen. Now I want you to listen again uh, about the parable of the lamp. We, we read Jesus saying immediately after the parable of the sower, he gives this picture of a lamp. And a lamp is put on a lampstand inside a house, and it gives light to the whole house. Now remember, this is a continuation of the parable of the sower. So it's connected. So what is he saying? Well, the lamp represents his teachings. The psalmist David said, the entrance of your word, preaching the word, teaching the word, quoting the words of Jesus, I'm shining light into this place. I'm shining light onto hearts. I'm shining the, the light of God because the word of God is the, 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 the light. The entrance of your words gives light and it gives understanding to even simple people. And so Jesus is saying, my, my, the, the, the lamp on the lampstand is my teaching. And he says that one day the various ways in which people heard and responded to his words are going to come to light. Whatever is hidden is going to be made known. Uh, however you responded to the message of Jesus and what you did with it is going to come out one day when it comes into the light. And then Jesus ends his message. Pay close attention to what you hear because every one of these four people that heard the gospel, it starts out saying they heard the message. They heard with joy. They heard the message. So Jesus then says, like them and like the fourth one who bore fruit, I want you to pay very close attention to what you hear, how you hear. Jesus routinely pointed out the importance of what goes into our ears, who has our ear, uh, 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 who, who is speaking into our lives, who has our attention. Who is giving us advice and guidance and direction and counsel? Who is speaking into our life about the big issues? Who are we listening to? Jesus would say things like, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And again, he that hears these sayings of mine and does them, hearing them, doing them, that's the one I'm going to liken unto a wise man that built his house upon the rock. 
and the rain fell and the winds blew and the floods beat on that house, but it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. So notice, to storm-proof your life is to listen to what Jesus said and do it. Live it. Walk it. Jesus said in another place, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They won't follow a stranger, he continues, but will run from him for they don't recognize the voice. They hear a voice, they hear a voice saying, I'm from God, I'm of God, I'm speaking to your life, into your life, what God wants you to hear. But if it's really a stranger, if it's a false prophet or a false Christ or a false teacher or a false message, my sheep recognize that and they don't follow because they only know and follow the voice of the shepherd. We, we are aware when he's speaking to us out of his word, when he's warning us, when he's guiding us, when he's directing us. We're aware of it. We hear it. And Jesus spoke not only of, of what you hear, but how you hear what you hear. How do you hear what you hear? He said, the closer you listen, that means scrutinizingly. That means discerningly. That, that means you're, whatever you're hearing, you're thinking about it, you're pondering it, you're weighing it, and you're discerning whether or not it's from God. And if it's from the Lord, he said, the more you think about what I have said, the more you think about my teachings and ponder them and meditate upon them and chew on them, the more understanding you will be given. And you will receive even more. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. So, so if you listen to him and meditate on his words and walk in his words, you're going to be, a, you're going to gain, you're going to gain all the more. But if you shut out his voice, you lose everything. Isn't that what he said? What little understanding they have will be taken away from them because they, they heard, but they rejected it. They shut out the voice of the Lord. And I wish I could be on ABC and CBS and NBC and CNN and MSNBC and Fox and all the rest and tell America you have shut out the voice of Jesus and that's why you're in such chaos. That's why you're in such trouble. That's why you're in such turmoil. Yeah. See, it's so important what we listen to, who we allow to speak into our life. Who we allow to speak into our life. Who, who's got our ear? Who's got your ear? Who's got my ear? Jesus said, if I have your ear, if I'm the primary voice that has your ear, you're only going to grow. You're only going to be blessed. You're only going to be mature. You're only going to take on the likeness of Christ. You're going to be a fruit bearer. So I want to talk to you today about who or what has your ear. It's so important. Oh, I can't hardly think of anything more important than this. There's not a person in the range of my voice right now that has not turned your ear to something or someone who primarily has your attention. Guarantee you. It's human nature to search out guidance and wisdom. I remember when I was a teenager and, and, I was, and I'd gotten saved and I was so desirous of somebody older and wiser uh, that I could listen to who could speak wisdom into my life about the big issues. And somebody who I could respect and whose words of counsel and direction and guidance would, would, would speak into my life and give me some direction because people naturally want direction. We want wisdom. We, we want somebody who's beyond us to tell us uh, this, that, or the other about the things that really matter to us. Because we need direction. We are sheep. We're sheep. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah says we're all like sheep. And we very easily go astray. And I'm suggesting today that one of the main ways we go astray is who or what we listen to. It's human nature. I, I want guidance. You want guidance. We all want guidance. What do I do with marriage? What do I do with sexuality? What do I do with friendships? What do I do with finances? What do I do with child rearing? What's, what's wisdom for me? 
And due to mass communication and social media that has exploded on the horizon, we hear hundreds of voices each and every day offering advice how to be successful, how to live morally and ethically, what is right and what is wrong. That's a huge, big question. What is right and what is wrong? Really? Is there a right? Is there a wrong? Or is it just up to you? Up to me? My truth? Your truth? All our truths? Why can't we all just get along? There is no truth. It's just what you decide is truth. It's up to you to come to your own conclusions about what is right or wrong for you, moral or immoral for you. Is, is there a, a real God who has given ultimate, non-negotiable truth? Th that's a big question. And, and so we want somebody to give answers. Um, there's voices out there everywhere, how to view people, how to view the world, how to view God, how to view the Bible, how to view money, how to view marriage, how to view child rearing. Advice givers, advice dispensers are everywhere. Oprah, Dr. Phil, books, magazines. Well, most of the voices we hear go in one ear and out the other now. Watch this now. Most of the voices we hear, they go, joop, joop. But some of those voices grab us. And these are the voices we decide really have something that we need to hear. And we, we decide we're going to listen to them and we're going to open our lives to them and we're going to let them speak into our life because they seem to make sense. And these are the voices that begin to affect our decision-making morally, ethically, financially, spiritually. You know that one sentence in one book can change the direction of your life? One statement from a TV personality can go like a seed into your soul and change the direction of your life, pivot you in one direction or the other, morally, ethically, spiritually, regarding Christ, regarding your walk with God. What voices have your ear? Now, now, why is this so important? Because in the last few weeks, we've been talking about the necessity of abiding in the vine. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And you're gonna do well as long as you stay stuck to the vine. We gotta stay plugged into the vine. Jesus said, as long as you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, when he says my words abide in you, that means the words we're listening to, the words that are speaking into our lives and instructing us and guiding us and advising us. He said, and my words abide in you. You will pray and ask what you will and it'll be done for you. He said, you will bring forth much fruit. You will succeed as a branch that brings forth fruit, which is why you were chosen. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. That you would go and bring forth fruit and your fruit would remain. He said, you're gonna succeed at that as long as you stay attached to the vine. So let me play devil's advocate for a minute. If I'm the devil... And, and, and I want to find the best way to get you disconnected from the vine, get you unplugged from the vine, because what happens to any branch that gets disconnected from the tree? It wilts, it rots, it dries up, and it dies. So, so, so now that you're saved, I, the devil, want to get you disconnected from the vine. That's what I'm after. Uh, uh, I, I want to get you disconnected so you don't bear fruit, because if you bear fruit, I'm sunk. If you bear fruit, then I'm going to lose some people because of you. So I'm going after you, and, I'm, and, and my goal is to get you disconnected from the vine. If I can do that. Now, if I'm the devil, here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for your ear. I'm going to go for what you listen to. I'm going to go for what you're hearing. What you're listening to, what is speaking into your life for advice and counsel, direction, truth. I'm going to go for your ear. I'm going to go, I'm going to bring things into your life that are not from God, not from the Bible. I'm going to try to get you to listen. Isn't this the first tactic Satan ever used way back in the ancient garden of Eden? How did he get Eve to take of the forbidden fruit? He approached her and spoke and she listened. She gave him her ear. And what did he do? He lied to her. He said, no, 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 no. If you eat of that tree, because she quoted 
all that she had to remember about the word of God. There was no word of God. There was no Bible. All Adam and Eve had to remember was one word from God. Don't eat of that tree. The day you eat of that tree is the day you're going to die. Now that's quicker than John 3, 16. That's all she had to remember. But what did the devil attack when he approached her? The word of God in her life. And he said, come on now, Eve. Uh, you're, you're not going to die. Let me tell you why God told you that. He told you that because he doesn't want you to be like him, wise and know what he knows. So, so in other words, Eve, he's ripping you off. And Eve listened. And when she listened, she believed a lie. And when she believed the lie, she took wrong action. And she ate the forbidden fruit. Then her husband, Adam, ate of the forbidden fruit. And all of us went down with them. But how did it begin? By who she listened to. You and I are responsible for three gates or gateways in our life. Three, the eye gate, what you look at. The ear gate, what you listen to. The mouth gate, what you say. Those are the three gates that we're responsible for. Here's the deal. I can't follow you out of church and be standing there when your eye gate or ear gate or mouth gate goes out of touch gate in a wrong direction gate. No, no, you, you, you got to let the Holy Spirit take over the eye gate, ear gate, and mouth gate. All right. And that's the challenge each and every day. Is it not to not say what you shouldn't say, not look at what you shouldn't look at and not listen to what you shouldn't listen to. God gave us eyelids, but he didn't give us ear lids. So when you're hearing the wrong thing, only thing you can do is walk away. Shut that book, turn off that show, whatever it might be. You got you to gotta walk away. But all three of those gates have profound impact on our life. Eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate. But I'm talking about the ear gate today. Because again, if I were the devil and I was targeting your life, I would target first among the gates. The ear gate is the one I would pick. Because the ear gate is the gateway of instruction and teaching and advice and counsel. Because whatever you're advised to do and how you're advised to live is the direction you're going to go. And I, as the devil, want you going the wrong direction. The wide road that leads to destruction is the one I want you on. And so I'm going to do my best to deceive you and speak into your life where you believe enough lies that you go to the wide gate and you get out of the narrow road that leads to life. And you know, the eye gate can become an ear gate. If you're listening to somebody through what they wrote. And this matters more than ever because, listen, we live in a world, folks, full of false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, false messages, falsehoods. How do you know that, Jeff? Because Jesus said so. Jesus warned in the last days. They said to Jesus, hey, what are going to be the signs of your return? First thing out of Jesus' mouth. Watch out that nobody deceives you. First thing, first sign that there will be pandemic. You talk about a pandemic, here's one, a pandemic of deception. Watch out that nobody deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming. Notice, come in his name. I'm here in the name of Jesus. I'm here to bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm here to teach you these things in the name of Jesus. And they are wearing the disguise of a servant of God claiming I'm the Messiah, and they will deceive not a few, but many. Then Jesus said a few verses later, many false prophets. How many false prophets, everybody? Many will appear and deceive how many? Many people. And again, in verse 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So there's going to be people coming in his name that are going to do supernatural things that are not from God. And because behind the supernatural sign or wonder, the false sign or wonder is going to be a false message that is designed to get you off course, out of the narrow road and messed up in your life. And aside from the false representatives of Christianity, which are everywhere because of social media, there's a thousand other secular voices out there all competing for your ear, secular TV, talk shows. What are the talk shows for? 
They are always there to dispense advice, counsel, direction, truth. Spiritual truth, moral truth, ethical truth, theological truth. Endless magazines that litter the checkout aisle at the grocery store. I was at the store the other day, and I had to wait in line. I, this, this woman in front of me had bought the store. <laughs> so I'm standing there. And have you noticed they know right where to put the chocolate? The M&Ms, the Snickers, all there they are. While you're waiting, talk about voices. But also I've noticed on both sides are these magazines. And here's celebrities <clears throat> dispensing advice on marriage, happiness, morality. And I happen to know I've read about them. Their lives are a mess. But there they are on some glossy colorful magazine cover to dispense advice to me, and I want to say, no, thank you. I want to follow somebody who's winning, not losing. <laughs> and they all claim to have sound, moral, philosophical, theological, spiritual advice. So let me lay out a few questions before we go today. You should ask before giving any voice your ear, your attention. Let me give you three simple questions you need to ask. One, when a voice comes your way, now remember, the primary voice is to be who? Jesus. My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and they follow me, and I know them. Okay, aside from that, though, now listen, other voices come in. I, I listen to other people, not just the Word of God, not just the red ink in the Bible. I listen to other people. But here's what I need to ask myself about anybody I'm listening to. Does their voice, does their message support a Christian lifestyle? You need to ask that. How often? I'm going to tell you, as a pastor of many years, I've seen this happen a thousand times. You've got a young person who comes up through the children's ministry. He ends up in youth ministry. He graduates from high school. And then he goes off to college. And his parents spend the big money. And off they go to some university that is acclaimed for their knowledge and training and expertise and so on and so forth. Maybe even Ivy League. And about six months later, this kid comes home. And the parents say, who's this? Because the light that was in their eye is gone. The, the, their countenance is shadowy. They're not amening anything about the Lord. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to pray anymore. And you say to them, what in the world happened to you? Well, I just, I got some balance. I learned some truth. I came to some realizations while I was there. And what happened was they came under some social, some uh, Marxist professors, some godless professors who don't love Christ, the Bible, God, morality, or anything that any Christian holds dear. They came under the voice. It was who they listened to, and it didn't take long at all for indoctrination to happen. And now that child that was radicalized for Jesus is radicalized for something else. And you go, what in the world happened? Well, they sat in a classroom and it was who they were listening to. It matters who you give, who you, who you give permission to speak into your life. Can I tell you, church, I'm very scrutinizing who I give permission to to speak into my life. Oh, I'm very scrutinizing. See, they need to be a cheerleader for the Christian lifestyle, or I'm not going to listen to them. I want them to be a cheerleader for my decision to follow Jesus. And if they can't cheerlead that, they don't get my ear. Isaiah the prophet warned the people of God about the consequences of listening to any voice that doesn't amen walking with the Lord. Listen to what Isaiah said. For those who guide this people are leading them astray. And those who are guided by them are brought to confusion. There you have the two telltale signs of listening to the wrong voice. If you're listening to the wrong voice, it's going to take you away from God, and it's going to bring confusion. Look at our nation. Look at America. Where is it? Can you believe where America is? I can't believe where America is. Up is down. Down is up. Black is white. White is black. Good is bad. Bad is good. Light is dark. Dark is light. Sweet is bitter. Bitter is sweet. Truth is false, and false is true. It's totally upside down, topsy-turvy. How has that happened? 
Because there was a time in America's history we decisively shut out the word of God. And when we did, the voices that came in guided this people astray. And those that are got and brought us to confusion. That's why this week I'm going to be at a pastor's conference and I'm speaking at the pastor's conference and the theme of the pastor's conference is revival because we're going to have a bunch of pastors coming together and we know the only hope left for America is a genuine God sent Holy Ghost, God breathed revival, an awakening. And apart from that, America is in deep, deep trouble because we have turned away from the voice of God. Paul the Apostle said in the last days, there's going to be a departure. Listen to what he said. The time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around themselves a great number of teachers and say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. I want you to notice how often the pronoun they, their, themselves is mentioned. I'll give it to you. Their, they, themselves, their, they, their. What's it saying? It's saying that even the people are going to get to the place where they will turn their ears away from sound doctrine and turn to myths that will support the lifestyle they want to live instead of sound doctrine that tells you how to walk with God. I've had people leave this church because I quoted the Bible. Yeah, I just up and left because I quoted the Bible. I've had people come because I'm quoting the Bible too. They come, but, but I've, do you understand how unpopular truth is these days? Truth is going the way of the dodo bird. You do realize that Bible truth. Ultimate truth, non-negotiable truth is going the way. It's, it, nobody wants to hear it anymore. But here's the deal. Are the voices that primarily have your attention today cheerleading your walk with Jesus? Who you're running with, who you're listening to, whose books you are reading, magazines, radio programs, whatever. Who are you listening to? Who has your ear? Second question, do they build your faith? Do the voices that have your ear make you stronger in Jesus? Do they make you stronger in Jesus? Do they build you up in the faith? The voices that you're listening to. Do they build you up in the faith? The people you're running with, they build up you up in the faith? People you're running around with, doing Friday nights with, Saturday nights with, doing life with. Are those voices, are those influences, are they building up your faith? Are they building your faith? Are they building you up in the faith? Paul said, I'm afraid. He said this to the Corinthian church. I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And how does that happen? By what you listen to. Because, G, because Paul went on to advise, therefore, let us pursue, chase after the things that make for peace and the things by which we may edify one another. Edification means your faith is being built up and supported and buttressed and, 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 and made more mature and, 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 and made more active and your walk with God is stronger because of what you're hearing. Isn't it so important? Watch this. If your faith is weakening and your walk is waning and your resolve is caving, you're likely listening to the wrong voices. But if your faith is growing and your walk is getting stronger and your relationship with Jesus is getting tighter, I assure you, you're listening to the right voices. Amen. Finally, the last thing. Do the voices you're listening to line up with Scripture? Do they line up with Scripture? Let me tell you about the Bible. The Bible is... The inspiration, it, 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 here's what it says about itself. Every scripture, every verse, every verse in the Bible is inspired by God, breathed out by God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable to you. It'll help you. Every verse will help you. Every book, 66 books. You've got your own library when you're carrying that Bible around. You've got 66 books between two covers. And all the word of God. The Bible is my unfailing GPS. You know, I have a GPS. I'm one of these people. I can get lost down the street a block from my house. 
I need a GPS. Yeah, seriously, Cindy will tell me, you don't know where you are, do you? And I'll say, no. <laughs> She'll go take a left. It kind of goes like that. But here's the deal. I need that GPS. And there have been times I typed the address that I wanted to get to in that GPS, and it led me to an empty parking lot. And I'm looking around going, but I had it in the GPS and it led me to an empty parking lot. I must have messed up with the address. I type it back in. I, I take a circle and I go where I think it's going to renegotiate and recalibrate. And it does and it kicks in and I follow it and it takes me right back to the same empty parking lot. So even the best inventions of men can lead you astray. But the Bible, the Bible is an unfailing GPS. It will never fail you. It will never guide you wrong. Seriously, it never will. That's why it's the all-time bestseller, no matter what people try to do to it. It is to this day the all-time bestseller. It's my instruction manual for living. It is the hinge upon which the door of all my decision-making swings. David said, how can a young person live a clean life? By carefully reading the map of your word. It'll always tell you the truth. And so is what I'm hearing, so I ask myself this, and, and I encourage you to do the same. Are the voices I'm listening to, do they line up with Scripture? Would the Bible give me the same advice as what I'm hearing? Would the Bible lead me into this practice? Would the Bible teach this practice? Even though somebody is saying this practice is of God, these manifestations are from God or whatever is from God, it, but does the Bible, does the Bible teach this practice? Do I find this practice or this advice in the gospels or in the epistles? Paul, did, did Paul, Peter, James, John, or Jude write about these things? If they didn't, they're not for me. So Jeff, that's narrow. It's a narrow way. Yeah. How many of you know it matters what you listen to? Can we stand up together today? I pray that all of you are tuned in tight to the voice of Jesus. Well, if ever there was a day, we need to be listening close to Jesus is today. Am I right? I'm right. I know I'm right. You need to have your, we need to be buried in that word, listening to that word, reading that word. So many false voices out there. So many fakes and phonies and scams. So many spiritual lies, lies about God, lies about the Christian life lies about morals, sexuality, so many lies. We need to be in the Word. The entrance of your Word gives light. It gives understanding to the simplest among us. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. You gave us ears to hear, but not just audio sounds, audio waves but to hear truth, to hear counsel and advice from heaven. Beginning with, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Have you heard that? That if you believe on him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you heard that? Have you really heard it? because it's the truth. Maybe you're hearing it for the first time right now. I'm gonna pray a simple prayer with you because you know, you can hear things all your life and they don't connect and all of a sudden you go, whoa, I've never thought about that. So I wanna pray a prayer with you that we'd respond to that word and let Jesus into our heart. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you open the door, repent to me, ask forgiveness of me, and let me come into your heart. 
You'll have a brand new life. You'll become a brand new person. So I'm gonna pray that prayer. If you need to pray it with me, pray it with me. Pray it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and rose from the dead so that I could be saved. Forgive me, Jesus, for all my sins. I open the door of my life. I turn to you by faith as my Savior and Lord. Come into my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now with your heads bowed, say, Jeff, I prayed that with you. I prayed it with you. Would you raise your hand right where you are? Just, just slip it up. I see that back there and back there all over this place. Beautiful sight. Now, I want those of you with your hands raised, look at me. I'm gonna dismiss this service and I want you to make your way down here because I wanna give you something very important to take home with you. And I wanna pray with you again. I wanna rejoice with you because you just prayed the most important prayer of your entire life. Amen. And so I invite you, please don't leave until you come down. Robert, come down here and stand with me so they can see you. Uh, Robert and I, Robert has this, the, the, the uh, little booklets that we want to give you, and he's going to help me pray with you, and, and uh, we're going to send you out with a blessing. How many of you are glad you came to the house of God today? Amen. Amen. How many of you know it matters what you hear and who you allow to speak into your life? Amen. Well, I'm going to let Cindy speak into my life right now and into you ladies' lives. So, Cindy... Tell them what's coming. Okay, so ladies, we've got about, I believe it's about four weeks left to get signed up for the Heels Conference, City on a Hill. Um, we have the Q&A um, luncheon that Lisa Harper is going to be at. So that's limited on tickets. So if you want to be part of that, you need to get signed up as quickly as possible because it's filling up. And these beautiful t-shirts, you can get those out there. Um, it's a particularly, it, it, I'm really not just saying this, it's a particularly soft, yeah, it's, it's not your standard church t-shirt. It's really nice. You know, I've got t-shirts at home, <laughs> there were church t-shirts, and it's like somebody, what is it they do that makes your clothes so stiff? Yeah, starch. Star it's like they were starched, but they're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, you're kind of wearing yeah. these things like a suit of armor. These are these nice. These are soft. Yeah. But, you, you know, we've got the purple and we've got the blue. And I actually got both because I, I want to wear, I've already worn them a few times, but I I wanted to have both. So, so there you go. It's up this to is you a city what you want to do. With light bulbs city, coming down yes. out of the city. It's very pretty. Because we are the light. Okay. Yeah. Um, you you are the light of the world. A city on a hill can't be hidden. So right. these are the flyers that are in your seats, ladies. Take it. Yep. Get signed up, um, and then <clears throat> excuse me, and pass it out to a friend. Yep. Okay. Pr bring Amen. some ladies, and we're excited to see you there. Amen. All right. Those of you that did raise your hand that prayed with me, we're about to dismiss. Please come down as soon as we dismiss. I want to meet you. And I want to give you these things to take home with you. If you're glad you came to church today, give a great big amen. Amen. All right. Let me pray over you. Father, bless the people as they go. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to be wise in who we allow to speak into our life. And Lord, thank you for the shepherd speaking to us. And we pray, help us, Lord, to walk in that narrow way that leads to life. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. We love you. See you Wednesday night for the book of Romans. God bless you.